How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and on today's episode of Baking with Andrew, we're going to be going over how to use 3D printing to create a silicone mold. And we're going to use the silicone mold to fill with liquid candy melt. And we're going to go over the process from start to finish, how to take a 3D printed part and turn it into a chocolate version of itself. You ready? Let's dive right in. The first step of this process is to 3D print our models. For this project, I picked the Combat from Star Trek Voyager because it's a pretty simple shape and also it's just a great show. The next step of this process is to apply a spray on primer and then sand the model smooth. What we're trying to achieve here is creating a nice smooth surface so the silicone mold will have a smooth even wall. Once the model has been sanded smooth, we'll apply a gloss clear coat just to fill in any last imperfections. Once the mold master has been repaired, it's time to build the mold box. I just used a plastic cup cut in half and a piece of cardboard for the base. Using a thin bead of hot glue, I attached the cup to the base and added a little bit extra just for good measure. Now that we've built our mold box, the next step is to attach our model to the box. Because we don't want the 3D printed part floating up into the silicone, I used some hot glue on the bottom of the part and pressed down firmly until it was attached to the box. With our mold box constructed, the next step is to spray it down using a mold release spray, which will prevent the silicone from sticking to the model. For this project, I used SmoothSil 940, which has a 10 to 1 mix ratio. After making the calculations of how much silicone I would need in the mold box, the next step is to actually mix the silicone together. Mixing part A and part B together and stirring until we have a nice even consistency is really the key to getting a good quality silicone mold. Once the two parts have been mixed, we're going to stir it until it becomes a consistent light pink color throughout the entire container. Once it's been stirred and reached that even consistency, we get to the most satisfying step of this whole project. We're going to pour the silicone directly into the mold into a fairly low spot, allowing the silicone to completely encapsulate our model. Once the model has been fully encapsulated, it's time to go back, remix the material, and then pour the rest of our molds. After waiting 24 hours for the mold to cure, we're going to remove the mold from the base. Because our master wasn't completely flush with the bottom of the mold, a little bit of flashing has seeped in under the part. Using an X-Acto knife, we're going to trim away some of these boundaries and peel them off before removing the part from the silicone mold. With the mold master removed, we're going to use an X-Acto knife and trim up some of the flashing just around the edges of the mold. After thoroughly washing the mold, the next step is to melt the candy melt. To get the candy melt to a consistency where it could be poured, I used a microwave at intervals of 30 seconds at 50% power. After removing the candy melt from the microwave, I stirred it for about 30 seconds to a minute for each mold, just to get it to a consistency that was pourable. It still wasn't quite a liquid, so I used my spoon to pack it into the mold and also to clean up some around the edges. After leaving the silicone mold in the refrigerator overnight, the candy melt had hardened to the point where it could be removed from the mold. I flexed the sides, popping it out, and you'll see there's still a little bit of flashing on the edges of the mold. This was fairly straightforward to trim, and I just used a knife to cut away the edges. One thing to notice on the finished product are some of the gaps around the sides. This is caused by air bubbles that were trapped in the mold that didn't escape during the hardening process. This shows up as a Swiss cheese type appearance, with little holes on the front of the candy. Just for fun, I also made a mold using a scan of my face that I took back in 2012. I used a brush on this model to make sure the silicone completely covered the more complex surface of the mold master. This way, there were no air bubbles left after the model had been fully encapsulated. Because this model had a more rectangular back, the trimming and cleanup process was a little bit more straightforward. I just trimmed at the edges of the mold and then removed the mold master. When pouring the candy melt into this mold, I used a technique similar to roto molding, where the mold is actually spun around, allowing the uncured material to fill in all the nooks and crannies and get any air bubbles to rise to the top. 
3D printed candy mold selfie came out great, but you'll notice an air bubble had formed in the bridge of the nose, causing a small void in the final model. And that's it. That's the entire process from start to finish. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below and I'll do my best to get to them. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.